أعزائي المشاهدين أهلا بكم في هذه المقابلة الحصرية التي نجريها مع السيدة الأولى للولايات المتحدة جيل بايدن والتي تأتيكم من البيت الأبيض طبعا هذه أول مقابلة تجريها مع محطة عربية أو دولية دكتور بايدن Thank you so much for having us Good to see you Welcome Welcome to my office Thank you So you just got back from the Middle East You visited Morocco, Egypt and uh, Jordan what message did you carry to people in our region as a first lady of the United States? Well, I think, or I hope that um, the people in the region felt that, uh, you know, there was a connection between the United States and the countries I visited. I, that's very important to my husband. And I think it's very important when I go that uh, I make a people to people connection, not a government to government. And hopefully it's, um, it then becomes, with the people I meet, I hope it then becomes heart to heart. Mm. Um, I saw you during the trip. You were very engaged. <laughs> Whether it was a, 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 a STEM uh, school in, in, in Morocco, whether yeah. it was the women's business uh, leadership in Jordan, and whether it was uh, even the technical college in Cairo. Mm -hmm. How do you leverage your background as an educator, as a, a person who teaches in a community co college to advance education for women and young people in the Middle East? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the reasons I go is to, um, to look at education programs. I visit schools all the time. I've been a teacher for uh, 38 years. Mm -hmm. And I think it's those people-to-people -people skills that I've developed um, you know, just as being a teacher and relating to uh, mostly young people. And I love to see their faces when they, well, you saw it, you know, when uh, the kids who had developed their own programs and how proud they felt of themselves and the kids who developed the, ro the robots and yes. the kids who were doing coding and learning English, no matter what they were doing, um, I love to hear their stories, to see what they're learning. And because education is so important in every country of the world, because education, I think, means economic empowerment in those countries. It's a fundamental human rights issue as well, as we've seen it in Afghanistan and other, other parts of the, of the Middle East as well. Um, what do you think are the challenges, from your observation, the challenges, the obstacles that maybe young people and women in the Arab world faces now, and how can the United States help? Well, I think it's um, uh, the challenges that everybody's facing. I think there are a lot of mental health challenges. I think mm -hmm. that uh, there are skills challenges where they're trying to learn certain skills to, to get jobs, uh, to get into the job markets, because that's what it all ends up being. Don't you think that, yeah. you know, I find that in the community college, that's what they want good job so that they can, um, you know, support their families. Right. And do you think they have, like, equipments? I know the USA does very active, yes. and this is the United States government also that they will help to give people what, what they need. Well, we I saw yeah. that in some of the projects. So I think the partnerships between the United States and the countries in the region are very important. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's to lift up young people and what they're doing. Um, you know, s people in the region are very cynical of U.S. foreign policy. Yet, you present diplomacy. You uh, carry with you American values. Do you see this as your role, for example, to reflect on the generosity of the uh, community service, uh, on everything that America stands for, yet people don't see it. They see maybe conflict and wars. They see the Iraq invasion through a successive administration. Oh. See, like, uh -huh. so many suffering, but yet they don't see the goodness of America. Do you see your role as a first lady of reflecting on that? Well, I hope so. I hope that my visit um, and just connecting with uh, people in the three countries, I hope that they saw what we value and, you know, jobs, uh, families, um, education, health care, the climate change. I mean, yeah, you know, in each culture. And it's so important. And so I hope that maybe uh, my visits in some small way can sort of change minds a little bit because we're not what you, what you, how you just described us. At least that's how I would never describe, 
the United States in that way. I think, um, you know, we all, it's a, I mean, you have to think of people globally and really we're all just human beings and they're all just about connections and understanding one another mm -hmm. and our cultures and really find where we have common ground. So you do think America is misunderstood in the Arab and Muslim world? Well, you told me they were <laughs> misunderstood. I didn't, I didn't feel that. Right. You know, I felt only warmth from the people in Egypt and in Jordan and in Morocco. Everywhere I went, mm -hmm. you know, people would say, USA, USA, or welcome. You know, I felt only warmth from those countries. What stood up? I mean, you, w you went to the pyramids. You were in so many projects, educational and yeah. otherwise. You went to three countries. You went to the wedding of yes, the Crown the Prince. Was, was so How exciting. was that? Oh, uh, it was so <laughs> exciting. You know, we've known, um, you know, Queen Rania a and the King for, for many, many years. So to see the Crown Prince uh, get married was uh, really, I mean, it was so exciting. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful wedding. And just to try, I mean, I had never seen the pyramids. Right. That was incredible. Um, just shopping, you know, in the local markets. I mean, everywhere I went and the people uh, told me their stories, what they were doing, um, you know, the things that the women were making. I mean, that they were creating their own businesses. That was fascinating how they made, remember the argon oil yeah. or the tapestries that they were embroidering. That was in Marrakesh. Yes, and so every country I found so interesting and um, really, I, I really felt a lot of warmth and, and caring from everyone I met. I want to ask you about the gift that you received in Egypt, but we have to stop for a quick commercial break. نتوقف لفاصل إعلاني قصير نتابع هذه المقابلة مع السيدة الأولى للولايات المتحدة جيل بايدن. ابقوا معنا. أعزائي المشاهدين نعود مرة أخرى لنتحدث مع السيدة الأولى للولايات المتحدة جيل بايدن. سنسألها عن هذه الهدية التي تسلمتها في مصر. So in the pyramids you presented. Uh, by this uh, pendant that it yes. apparently is a replica yes. of Tut King Tut and it has a blue uh, beetle. Right, a and scarab, right? Exactly, yes. scarab. And it represents uh, rebirth mm -hmm. and resurrection. First of all, what do you think of the gift? And second, do you relate this to your journey of pain, sometimes of loss maybe, and of coming strong? You know, I, it, was, it was a beautiful gift, first off. And uh, I really felt that it was a really a reflection of mm -hmm. the history of the pyramids, and, uh, and which I found so fascinating. And I could have gone, I think, every single day. And because there was so much to learn about the people, the history. Mm -hmm. The uh, culture. It, yeah, the culture. I mean, yeah. it was fascinating. And it was a... It was a very beautiful gift, and I appreciated, you know, the history of Egypt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to come back to this part, which is about you. You're the only first lady who is a working mother <laughs> and a working <laughs> yes. grandmother. Yes. How do you balance the role? You know, I just, I feel like uh, I love teaching. It's my life's work. And so when we were elected, I said to my husband, I'm going to teach. And he said, oh, I don't know. It could be kind of hard. And I said, but I'm going to do it. And, uh, and I'm doing it because I think teaching is so important. It's what mm -hmm. I love, what mm -hmm. I do. But then I have this incredible role as First Lady that every day is different. I get to meet mm -hmm. people all over the United States and see, like you're saying, different cultures, different, uh, just ev different communities. Mm. And uh, I don't know, I can't give it up. You know, th I couldn't <laughs> take one or the other. So I, I found a way to marry them together. And, and so far it's worked. So how does it work? Do you say to the president, well, I'm leaving this morning, you make yes. coffee and <laughs> said, I have a class to teach? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, no, he's used to it by now, because like I, I said I've been teaching 38 years, so right. a long time. But he wants me to be happy. Of course. And I am happiest, I think, when I'm in the classroom. Of course. Um, I also wanted to ask you about um, 
The fact that people say President Biden is too old to run, he might have some health issues. How do you, how do you respond to that? Um, what's your feeling about this when people say that? You know, I, Joe has more energy than uh, a 40 year old, you know, and uh, look at all he's done in the last three years. I mean, he's, he's uh, in our administration, he's brought together you know, both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. And he's, uh, he's had so many uh, programs that, uh, you know, that have benefited people of the United States. I mean, I could list them, but, you know, like the infrastructure program or um, the American Rescue Plan to help with the pandemic, just so many things, debt relief recently. And, you know, I don't think you need to look at his age you need to look at what he's accomplished, what he's doing right now, and what he will continue to do for the people of the United States. I know you've been married for a long time and you're very, <laughs> very close, which is a good thing. Yes. Um, do you offer him advice on domestic issues? No, I don't, uh, no, he has enough advisors. I mean, I listen to him, you know, he listens to me. I, I bring back stories when I travel, I tell him about, all the kids I meet and, um, you know, the funny, cute stories. Remember the children who were learning English by singing right. the American yes. song? And um, so I try to bring him the human aspect, right. the human stories. And so because a lot of times he travels to countries and he may not see that beca uh, because he's in meetings with, mm -hmm. you know, the leaders of the country. So I try to bring in the human element. Do you worry we are in an election season? Do you worry from this constant attack on the president, on the Biden family, from the former president, uh, Donald Trump? Does it get to you? Do you think it's serious? Do you dismiss it? You know, I try uh, not to listen to it because in, in my, the way I see it is there's two different, they're very different administrations, very different leaders. You know, and from what this country saw, I thought that the last administration was filled with, with chaos and confusion. Um, and in my husband's administration, I feel that he's offered Americans strong, steady leadership. And I think that's why he was elected, and I think that's why they will elect him again. So how do you frame the argument? We have many viewers, not just overseas in the Arab and Muslim world, but also in the United States, mm -hmm. in swing states. That makes a difference. Of course. So wha if you wanted to address him, why should they re-elect President Biden again? Because I think he has shown, uh, because of what he's accomplished in his administration, because I think he does have a very steady hand. He's He has wisdom. He has so much experience in foreign policies, in domestic policy, because he's been in government for so many years. He, on the global stage, he knows all the world leaders, and, um, and he gets things done. And that's the bottom line, he gets things done. So um, we suppose that you're gonna win the next election. What are your priorities? What, do you, what are you gonna focus on? same as you're doing now or is there something else in additional? No, I think I will carry on with what I've been doing because they are three things that are very important to me. So uh, I'm going to focus on the military and how to make uh, their lives better. Uh, we are a military family. Our mm -hmm. son was Army and my dad was in the Navy. Um, and of course cancer, uh, as you alluded mm -hmm. to, I mean we lost our son to cancer, and I think it's very important that uh, we provide help for families to know how to navigate systems uh, if someone, you know, in their family gets cancer. Mm -hmm. And of course, education will always be course, a big part heart. of my heart, so yeah. yeah. Of course, and um, you're active. Uh, I know that you jog, uh, you like uh, soul cycle. cycling. Cycle. <laughs> So is this a way to, I mean, you just turned 72 and happy plated birthday well, again. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, how, do you how do you keep these um, activities? Uh, are you able to do all of this in, in the short time uh, in comparison to your teaching, for example, wow. and your role as a first lady? You know, I make my health a priority. Mm. And so uh, on my schedule, I make sure that I schedule all my 
exercise and I eat healthy and uh, I feel like you know, exercise uh, for me gives me a sense of balance. Um, it is a great way to start my day. It makes me calm and um, it gives me strength, I think, to uh, accept the challenges that I have each and every day. Mm -hmm. Just like every other American mother, you know, that's um, trying to juggle so many other things or American woman. I saw a video of your grandkids saying basically that our grandma loves to do tricks on us. <laughs> she loves to trick us. Yeah. You still do this kind of thing yes, in the of White course. House? <laughs> yes, yes. And um, yeah, so uh, I always try to, I don't know, think of something to make them laugh and something that I hope that they'll remember. And, um, and I said to my one granddaughter recently where I called her and I said, come on, we're going to go cycle. And I said, when you are a grandmother, I want you to tell your grandchild, hey, I used to, do, I used to cycle with my grandma, with right. my nana. So yeah, it's just fun. You know, it's just creating fun for the kids. And finally, if you, this is suppose that we don't know how the results are going to happen in the election, but how would you want the American people to remember Jill Biden, her role as a first lady of the United States? Oh my gosh, I don't think I'm ready to, <laughs> to <laughs> figure that out. I think uh, the American people will figure that out for themselves. But um, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, to this campaign and another four years. And you're going to be active on the campaign? Are you oh yes, be I've already been, I'm already out there campaigning. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. You want to come with me? Yes, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I would do. <laughs> I consider it an invitation. <laughs> it is. Um, Dr. Biden, thank you so much for oh, your time. Thank you. We really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. أعزائي المشاهدين شكرا للمتابعة ونلقاكم مرة أخرى في لقاء آخر. هذا اللقاء كان من البيت الأبيض مع السيدة الأولى جيل بايدن. إلى اللقاء.